Hello everyone, in this video you will see the different options for replacing a missing tool, the pros and cons of all the different options and some important factors that should be considered when choosing between them. People can lose teeth because of numerous reasons, caries, trauma, periodontal diseases or they can be congenitally missing. Here I will talk about four different options for replacing a single missing tool. These options are a dental implant, a bridge or a conventional fixed partial denture, resin reinforced or resin bonded bridge and a removable partial denture. Before I begin, we have to understand that each modality is a possible treatment option and has its own advantages and disadvantages. Among these options, how do we decide what is the best for the patient? There are several factors affecting the final treatment decision regarding the replacement of a missing tooth. These factors are case dependent. In many cases, if more than one treatment option is possible, the definitive replacement depends on the patient's final decision or their financial status or is influenced by patient's gender, age and patient's knowledge. Therefore, it is mandatory to understand the patient's needs and demands. Now, let us see what are the different options for replacing a missing tooth. The first option that we will take a look at is a fixed partial denture, in short FPD, also known as a bridge. So, in this case, we have to take the support from the adjacent healthy teeth. To break it down further, the healthy adjacent supporting teeth, also known as the abutments, are significantly reduced to create enough space for the retainer which is connected to the pontic. The pontic is a part replacing the missing tooth. However, the major issue with FPD is that we have to grind down the healthy adjacent teeth to make space for the crowns on them. So what happens when you do that? You are essentially removing the strongest tooth structure which is the enamel. This makes the tooth more susceptible to caries and dentinal hypersensitivity. In addition to that, when you're reducing the tooth, you may come dangerously close to the pulp causing pain, which then warrants an endodontic or a root canal procedure. This adds to the overall expense of the treatment apart from the fact that you are damaging the otherwise healthy tooth. Therefore, it is always advised to take an x-ray before starting the preparation for FPD. This helps us to understand the tooth anatomy and we can evaluate the tooth and the height of the pulp chambers. Looking at the x-ray, we can predict if the patient should require an endodontic treatment. Therefore, an intentional root canal treatment can be performed before shaving down the abutments. Other drawback related to FPD is that the cement underneath the crowns may wash out, creating area for bacteria to grow on the tooth surface underneath, leading to caries or infection if left untreated. Also, if the crown margins are placed subgingivally and oral hygiene is not maintained, it could lead to gingival inflammation or periodontal problems. Another disadvantage is that over time, there may be some amount of bone loss below the pontic, leading to entrapment of food particles below. One major issue is that if one tooth is lost over time, the entire structure is compromised and has to be replaced. Having said all that, it still remains one of the most sought after option because of the following advantages. It is a fixed or a permanent option. It does not have to be removed on and off like a removable denture. It does not compromise the aesthetics. In fact, if you want a lifelike appearance that is quite possible with an FPD, it is an economical option. It is cheaper when compared to a single implant. It is faster than implants and can be completed within a maximum of one to two weeks. It is not dependent on patient's health history. It is long lasting. According to numerous studies, the longevity of FPD is estimated to be eight to 10 years. Also, one advantage is that you can remove and replace if needed. Let us now look at some factors that you need to consider before going ahead with your FPD preparation. One is that you need support from two adjacent teeth on either side of the space to replace one tooth. The only documented exception for a cantilever FPD permitting a single abutment is a replacement of a maxillary lateral incisor with the canine as an abutment. Two is a periodontal status of the abutment. If the teeth are mobile or severely compromised with bone loss or pockets, they won't serve as good abutments. In that case, FPD is not really preferred. The third point that I'm going to talk about is very important for a successful FPD. So a lot of people report constant dislodgement of their FPDs. Why does that happen? It is mostly because of inadequate crown heights. So check if the crown structure of the abutment is, is sufficient for support. If the crown height is not sufficient, it, it will definitely lead to dislodgement of the bridge. So it may need some additional procedures like crown lengthening, orthodontic extrusion or creation of grooves for improving the retention. 
So this has to be evaluated before you start with the preparation of your prosthesis. The fourth point is to evaluate the abutments for caries or infection. All that has to be taken care of before starting the procedure. FPDs are generally a good option for replacing a missing tooth and it has a long-term success rate provided the preparation design is proper and good oral hygiene is maintained. Since we are already on the topic of bridge, one more option that is worth exploring is a modified version of a bridge and that is resin bonded bridges or resin reinforced bridge. Now resin bonded or resin retained bridges are excellent minimally invasive fixed prosthetic tooth replacement options. So what are these? So this bonded bridge consists of an artificial tooth or the pontic, the part which replaces the missing tooth and the pontic is supported by wing-like extensions connected to the adjacent teeth or the abutments, mostly on the lingual or the palatal surfaces. And as the name suggests, the wing portion is basically bonded to the abutments with a strong dental adhesive. Usually only a minimal preparation is required on the abutment tooth to accommodate the wings and therefore this treatment is considered minimally invasive. The common materials used in the fabrication of resin bonded bridges include ceramics or metal ceramics. Composites can also be used if they are temporary. They can be temporary or definitive tooth replacement option for a short span edentulous space. Preferably when you have one missing tooth, it works very well. One more variant of this resin bonded bridge is a fiber reinforced composite bridge. I'll talk more about resin bonded bridges in another video. So stay tuned for that. Coming to the advantages, it is minimally invasive. You are basically preparing only the lingual surface of the abutment teeth. It has a strong bond, especially when ceramics are used. And if the case selection is proper, it will have a predictable success. Moreover, it is an excellent aesthetic option and plus it is cheaper than a conventional bridge or an implant. The disadvantages or limitations of resin bonded bridges include they are generally indicated for replacement of a single missing anterior upper or lower tooth. Although it can be used in the posteriors, it is usually not the best option due to the higher biting or occlusal forces which may lead to bridge debonding or fracture. Also, it has to be avoided in cases of deep bite. Here, the chances of debonding are very high. It is a technique sensitive procedure. You need good skills and precision to actually prepare the abutments for accommodating the wings. Case selection is also very important. Avoid in cases where there is insufficient enamel as that is necessary for forming a strong bond. Important factors that you need to consider for a resin bonded bridge. So they are not recommended in situation where there is no space to accommodate the wing like extension that covers the abutment tooth. For example, a deep by case, cases where the abutments are rotated, have minimal enamel, or the abutment tooth itself has less than ideal tooth structure or bone support. Now, the next option that we have is dental implants. When it comes to replacing a single tooth, implants are considered to be the gold standard because they are the closest artificial substitute that you can have for a teeth. What is an implant? An implant is a titanium screw-like structure which is drilled into the bone through a minor surgical procedure. After it integrates or fuses with the surrounding bone, a crown is placed on the implant. The popularity of the implants are because of the numerous advantages that they have. These include, the best part is that they do not require any modification or reduction of the adjacent teeth. They feel more comfortable and natural than other options. They provide great aesthetic results. They prevent resorption of the alveolar bone. They have a long lifespan making them cost effective in the long term. They are permanent and durable and they can be done in one day in some cases through an immediate implant placement procedure with an immediate temporary crown. Although implants are the best options, a lot of factors are necessary to consider for the success of the treatment. Number one, health of the patient. If the patient's health is compromised due to conditions like bleeding disorders, uncontrolled diabetes, bone diseases, cardiovascular diseases, or has been on immunotherapy for cancer, or has been on steroids or other immunosuppressive treatments for a long time, or has been taking anti-resorptive drugs like oral bisphosphonates, all these patients are poor candidates for implant treatment. Therefore, a thorough medical history and investigation has to be done before implant treatment for any patient. Next, 
सिगरेट स्मोकिंग और एनी फॉर्म ऑफ टोबैको कंजम्पन इंटरफियर्स विद द हीलिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्प्लांट लीडिंग टू हायर चांसेस ऑफ फेलियर इट इज यूजली एडवाइज टू स्टॉप स्मोकिंग फॉर वीक्स बिफोर एंड आफ्टर द सर्जरी थर्ड एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इज इन एडिकुएट बोन इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू हैव गुड क्वालिटी बोन विद एडिकुएट हाइट एंड विथ A CBCT scan is taken to evaluate the bone quality and dimensions prior to the implant placement. If the bone is inadequate, it may need additional procedures like bone grafting to increase the bone width and height. In case of maxillary teeth, a sinus lift procedure may also be necessary to increase the height. These procedures will increase the cost of the entire treatment and will also take 3 to 6 months to heal before you can even go ahead with the implant surgery itself. Another thing to evaluate before placing the implant is to check for any irregularities in the occlusal plane or any drifting or tilting of the teeth. If the lost tooth has not been replaced for quite some time, the adjacent teeth may tilt or the teeth of the opposing arch may supra erupt. This decreases the space for the crown portion of the implant. If this is neglected, we will go ahead and drill the implant in the bone, but there will be no place for the crown itself, defeating the whole purpose of the implant treatment. So these irregularities have to be corrected prior to the surgical procedure. Coming to the disadvantages of the implants, it requires a minor surgery, so not so not all patients will be comfortable with that option. Also if the patient has any medical history like we've already discussed, they will not be very good candidates for this procedure. It is the most expensive option among the four discussed here. There are some minimum requirements for the implant to be successful. regarding the bone height and width that we have already discussed the whole process from implant placement in the bone to getting the prosthesis or the crown fixed takes longer than a bridge or a denture approximately 2 to 3 months till you get the final permanent prosthesis so for predictable success of implant treatment careful case selection is important with necessary investigations to rule out any health issues and also a cbct scan to evaluate the bone height and width and the last option we have is the removable partial denture or the rpd as the name suggests a removable partial denture can be removed and reinserted by the patient when required without the help of a professional it consists of an acrylic base which mimics the gingiva on which the artificial tooth is placed which serves the purpose of replacing the missing tooth an rpd can be made in basic acrylic material it can be reinforced with metal or it could be a flexible denture These RPDs may or may not have metal clasps. For a single tooth replacement, removable appliances are ideally the last option because they are not very stable compared to the fixed options. It may require some time to get used to the denture. They have to be removed regularly to clean and maintain hygiene. They lead to resorption of the underlying bone. So if a future implant has to be planned, please avoid this as a temporary replacement option. instead give a resin reinforced bridge or an sx retainer also they can break if dropped and can be lost easily as well another disadvantage is that your sense of taste can also be lost slightly if the palate is covered coming to the advantages of a removable partial denture so the major benefit of a partial denture is that they are far cheaper than implants or bridges or any other permanent option it is easy to repair or refabricate if broken It is faster than implants. No surgery or modification of adjacent teeth is required. It gives good enough aesthetic result and it is not dependent on patient's medical history. Some factors to consider before starting the treatment. It is very important that the patient knows what to expect of a removable prosthesis. The chewing efficiency and comfort is not as great as a permanent options, so you can't have unrealistic expectations. Also it requires a patient cooperation and patience when it comes to a removable appliance. It may take some time to get used to the appliance. Sometimes it needs additional adjustments by the dentist. But once you get used to it, it works pretty well. Flexible dentures are generally more comfortable and preferred for a single tooth. If an implant is planned later and an RPD is given as a temporary alternative, avoid it because it will lead to resorption of our precious bone which will hamper the implant placement. And the last thing that you need to take care of is that the adjacent teeth cannot be mobile because they are the main supporting teeth. So they have to be in good health and condition. So to summarize, We have discussed four options for replacing a missing tooth. 
one a conventional bridge or a fixed partial denture a resin retained bridge dental implants and removable partial denture all these options have their pros and cons you have to remember that the final treatment decision does not depend only on the basis of clinical examination or the dentist's opinion but should be discussed in close consultation with the patients and with this we come to the end if you like this video please don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe button and if you have any questions you can always mention them in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to answer all your queries